The year was 1943. The war was on. Canada had been at war for four years. A postage stamp cost three cents. A bottle of Coca-Cola cost a nickel. The same price as a double scoop ice cream cone. The Dion Quintuplets, Canada's sweethearts, were now nine years old and still the largest tourism attraction in the country. Ads for victory bonds were in all the newspapers, a way to pay for and end the war. In 1943, the end of the war in Europe was in sight. Prime Minister Churchill and Pearson, along with FDR, deliberated in Quebec on the conduct of the war. Everyone hoped it would soon be over. At home, Tourist operators in the region began to plan for the future. The Tweed News reported, tourist resort hotel proprietors in the district north of here have organized an association to be known as the Land O'Lakes, North Frontenac, and Addington Tourist and Protective Association. The meeting was at Salmon's Resort, and it was the unanimous opinion that to promote the tourist business, particularly in the post-war period, a great deal more could be accomplished through a united effort. Community leaders were present, including MPP J.A. Pringle as honorary president and Wibb Thurston as president. Others included Messrs. Thompson, R., Salmon, Perry, McGregor, Tooley, and Huffman. MPP Pringle pointed out that North Frontenac was one of the finest tourist districts in the province, and those interested should make plans to take care of the great influx of American visitors who will visit Ontario after the war. Interesting to note was that Sam Curry, future owner of Tweed News, was also at the meeting, representing the Ontario Tourist Bureau. Mr. Curry would later be instrumental in the continuation of Land O'Lakes. Following the unconditional surrender of Germany in 1945, men and women were finally coming home from Europe. Tourism in Land O'Lakes was soon to pick up. Everyday life was starting to get back to normal. The group of visionary business people, now named the Land O'Lakes Tourist Association, could discuss more typical association issues such as water levels and fish restocking. Daily delivery of pasteurized milk was also a key concern in 1945. Great discussion took place before members finally decided to increase dues to $5 for the next season. By 1951, John R. of Fernley Lodge was still president and Sam Curry of Tweed, the new secretary treasurer. The original founders were still together, but interest was waning in this fledgling group and a decision was made to reorganize. Major P.K. Ketchison, a well-known conservationist and organizer, visited and inspired the group. He urged resort owners to protect the fishing resource and provide guests the best possible service and charge whatever the market will bear. Although it's uncertain who first used the name Land O'Lakes, in a 1960 article in the Tweed News, author Merrill Dennison states that the Toronto Telegram's Pete McGillian came up with the name to describe a fisherman's paradise. Throughout the 50s, Tweed Sam Curry carried the Tourist Association and made it grow. As editor and publisher of the Tweed News, he knew everyone. Tourism was in his blood. He personally knew every resort owner and put his vacation district on the map. His sudden death in 1961 at age 56 was a great loss. Said to be a workaholic, he gave everything for the advancement of the community and the growth of Land O'Lakes. After Sam Curry's death, a new person was required to fill Sam's shoes, someone to organize and administer the association activities. President Ted Cournier knew the perfect woman for the job. Jeanette Whitfield was working in the office at Sawyer Stoll in Tweed. Ted talked Jeanette into filling in for a while. The a while lasted three years. And then when he died, I carried on. That's when I came in the picture. When they asked me if I would only do, take his place for, until they found someone else. Jeanette took her duties seriously. She wrote and designed new visitor guides and worked on building up membership. Sam Curry had built the association to 100 members. 
Jeanette wanted more. It was below 100. And uh, so every year there were more people, more members, that more people that joined became members. And, if I, and I, I'm pretty sure if my memory is correct that uh, when I re resigned to do something else, which was to run for the council, and um, that it, was, it must have been close to 300. It was an enjoyable beginning for me. Throughout the 60s and 70s, the Land O'Lakes group held steady. Membership declined in numbers, but the core remained. Land O'Lakes became incorporated and recognized one of its longest serving board members, James Arbuckle of Arden, for serving 14 years. In 1979, it was time for a new anchor to keep the association together. Membership numbers were waning, and someone had to help the directors in a more full-time capacity. The new anchor was Faye Henry. Ken Black and Ken Douglas thought I, I needed to be working. <laughs> they got me involved, and they needed a secretary. And The tourist office was really my home, and... Uh, uh, we, we built a, actually, we built an addition onto the house, onto our home, to accommodate the association. Faye worked out of her home for 17 years, serving the membership, designing the next generation of maps and guides, and running the daily business of the association. I don't, I think we felt we were a forgotten area, in as much as, naturally, we don't have a lot to, uh, maybe to draw people, especially in the winter. We didn't feel we had enough to draw people to the area in the winter, and yet the businesses had to survive over the winter, so they had to make enough over the summer to carry them, and uh, uh, we needed more, more help to even establish businesses winter-wise. So, um, and the more government help we had, it was, it was a requirement, and that, that was the challenge, to get, to get them to notice us, you know, to make, be aware of our area and what we had, the natural beauty of our, our area. Faye ran a tight ship and enjoyed the students who worked the tourist booths. The students had to dress properly for work. And not too uh, short of shorts and not too uh, flimsy of tops and certainly, uh, you know, nice and clean hands and which and I inspected them quite often and without, without them knowing I was coming, you know, I would drop in because I was on the road a lot anyway, so I would pop in uh, unexpectedly and uh, if things weren't just the way I, they should be, I would, I would just nicely say, I think you should be wearing a blouse or whatever. She was uh deeply involved and dedicated in uh, tourism as well as uh, the duties of her job. Uh, she was responsible for uh, collecting uh, membership money and selling ads in our map and other publications and uh, uh, she uh, did an excellent job, just excellent. She, she, was the, she was one of the key, well, she was the key player. There's no doubt about it, in my mind anyway. Over the next few years, the Land O'Lakes Visitor Guide and Map evolved and improved. Faye, Dean Van Dusen, Jack Weiss, Werner Lips, Ken Douglas, Ken Mifflin, and many others worked hard to grow the membership again to 300 strong. Warner, Warner was, he was the strong point in the North. There's no doubt about it. He, he looked after that, um, that part. Ken Douglas, I know he was active for years and years, and um, well, there was there's so many. Bringing up uh, a tourist area cannot uh, cannot be done in isolation. The, the, this world has expanded, and we have to take pace with it and and promote our product, our jewel, all over. These former presidents knew the importance of the association and knew unity and collective marketing were essential to survival. I was, uh, I was interested in joining the Land Lakes Tourist Association because of the uh, 
I was aware of some of the uh, other uh, directors and uh, I had communications with them through the business operations and um, I was really interested in tourism, tourism in the area and uh, I uh, submitted my name for membership and was accepted and uh, became uh, a director. I would not have joined the Land O'Lakes Tourist Association if I didn't think they were required and they were doing a, a good job in promotion of tourism in the area. Ah, it, is, it is extremely important. If it wouldn't have been for the uh, Tourist Association, my involvement in that and my knowledge, uh, I don't know how I could have survived. As marketing and printing techniques improved, so did the quality and attractiveness of the Land O'Lakes publication. In 2003, the Board of Directors hired Terry Shea as General Manager. With a strong background in sales and marketing, Terry, with the assistance of Office Administrator Joanne Cuddy, realized the variety of tourism opportunities for the region and organized stakeholders to work collectively. I don't think that the region would be able to draw from as many uh, near and distant markets uh, for economic benefit as they do now if it hadn't been for the Land and Lakes Tourist Association. I, I would challenge any other area that calls themselves a Land and Lakes uh, to show as much opportunity and as much diversity as this region does. What we need to do is we need to, as a collective, uh, view the uh, Land and Lakes Tourist uh, region as uh, one large opportunity with many, many uh, possibilities for visitors so that when they come and enjoy it this year, they don't necessarily have to come back to the very same piece of property next year, but they know and they have enough uh, information provided to them through a tourist association to know that they can come back with confidence, find great accommodation, new experiences for their families, uh, new opportunity for uh, sporting and recreational um, experiences and uh, know that it isn't something that is only going to happen once or twice that if they want to return for a year and year in and year out for a number of years that the experience will be something that they can be confident in knowing it's going to be a, a rewarding experience for the whole family and a different experience not completely different but different on an annual basis and uh, that's what will keep them coming back